I just uploaded two videos. They were shot like that. Sorry, I didn't plan on uploading them to YouTube. Um, so I'm gonna tell you my nosebleed story that put me in the emergency room. Yay! Change of scenery in my parents' backyard. Whoop, whoop. Um, okay, so story starts. I'm at my house, everything. I decide, let's clean out the fridge. I had microwavable Salisbury steak that I had left in there for probably over a week. I open up the container. I'm like, ugh, ugh. I dump it out. I go to the sink and go, and gag. My nose starts bleeding. I go to the bathroom, everything. It's not stopping. I decide to make the videos that I posted. And I was like, haha, it's going to stop soon anyway. So might as well make a video for the memory. Um, it stopped. It went all good. I had gotten blood on my hands. I had taken my shirt off after the video and everything because it was getting on me and I didn't want it getting on my shirt. So then I'm like, I'm going to get a shower and clean myself off. It'll be good. Um, I wash my hair and everything. And then I lean my head over to do a towel turban thing. And my nose starts bleeding again. Um, no big deal. Trying to get it to stop. Turned off the shower. Sat on the edge of the bathtub. Everything. It'll be fine. Everything's good. It'll stop like the other one. It would not stop. I called my mom, told her that it started again. It's not stopping. Um, told her to FaceTime me, showed her, showed her the bathtub was covered in blood and everything. And I was like, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's very bloody. But I was like, I'll be fine. <coughs> <coughs> um, then... I had pinched my nose, which I'm supposed to have cotton in my nose right now, but I took it out um, to change it, and then I posted the video things, and I'm doing this. So I'll have to do that as soon as I um, finish this. But then I pinched my nose, and it was all fine. It was great until I got blood clots on both sides. <clears throat> then... I started feeling blood run down my throat. And then I started throwing up the blood. I would literally open my mouth to say something and go, Ugh. I couldn't breathe out my nose. Every time I tried to breathe through my mouth, I'd go, Bleh, bleh. more blood, more blood, more blood. Um, so I called my mom. I'm struggling to talk to her. I told her to FaceTime me. I think I need to go to the hospital. She doesn't FaceTime me. Supposedly, she had told me she was calling my grandmother that lives across the street to come get me. I didn't hear that part. But I'm also throwing up blood, not feeling okay. Then, I call my mom back. And I'm still throwing up blood. And I told her to FaceTime me. Finally, she FaceTimed me. She sees me throwing up blood. And I'm thinking, what am I supposed to do? Um, hang up on my mom, said, I think I need to go to the hospital, everything. Um, undo the tissue from my nose. And I'm like, you know what? Let's see if I can breathe out my nose. We'll try this. I go. And then I sneezed. So, like, I sneezed and then I had the okay I sneezed first and then I had blood clot hanging out my nose so then I went hmm and made them spew out I like blew my nose and they came out and then my nose started bleeding again and a little bit was down my throat and then I leaned my head threw up some more and then it was just coming out my nose and I was like I'm fine I'm fine with it coming out my nose. I don't want to throw up blood anymore. Because it, it, I hate throwing up. It, it just, I hate it. Um, and so, stop. They're, the dog's, like, licking my leg. And it's annoying. Uh, so, 
finally I hear knocking on my door and I'm yell, I yell, I can't do anything. I'm naked in a bloody bathtub. You know the code, you have a key. Because I have a code to my door, but I didn't know if I locked the bottom lock, which meant the key. They're banging some more, and I'm like, I'm so frustrated. I grab a Cool Whip container and put it under my nose. And no, the Cool Whip container, I had picked up the congealed blood and put it in there. So that's why there was so much blood in that. Um, because every time I tried to wash it down the drain, it'd clog up my drain. Okay, back to that. So I took the Cool Whip container, put it under my nose. I'm butt naked. I'm butt naked. There were bloody footprints on the floor. And I walk myself to the front door, unlock it, open and go, what? And I saw that it was my grandmother. I said, I'm going back to the bathtub. And then I removed the Cool Whip container. So my grandmother, me, I'm a teenager. I understand she washed me when I was a baby and la la la. But when you grow up and you've hit puberty and you girl, guy, whatever, um, girls, when you grow boobs, guys and girls, when you get pubic hair and stuff, you, you don't really want your grandmother to see you naked. But at that point, I was like, just help me. I'm gonna wash myself off. And she's like, yeah, let me wash you off here. La, la, la. And I felt kind of awkward. But then also I was like, it doesn't matter. I'm not doing good. And then we almost finished washing me off. And I told her I felt like I was going to pass out. She said, okay. I said, no, I'm going to pass out. She said, sit down. She tries to help lower me down. And I'm too heavy. And I, like, fall. Not, like, really far, but I fall. And it kind of hurt. But it wasn't, like, super far that I would have broken anything into the bathtub. I'm just pouring blood and pouring blood and pouring blood. Finally, my parents get there. Uh, of course, my dad doesn't come into the bathroom, which, yeah, uh, but my mom does, and I'm upset, mm, feeling like I'm gonna pass out, I'm freaking out, I'm hyperventilating, because I'm like, I'm gonna pass out, ah! um, and stuff, and then my mom's talking about, what are we gonna do with this, what's that? And I yelled at them. I was like, just get me clothes. And my mom's like, well, I'm trying to find you some clothes. I said, I don't care if they get bloody. Grab me a nightgown. Grab me something. Grab me underwear and a nightgown. I don't need a bra. I don't care. And I didn't get a bra. And I'm fine with that. Like, I, I really don't care that I didn't have a bra. Oh. I think something just bit me. Um. Uh, like, not having a bra wasn't bad. Um, and I put the underwear on and stuff. And they had to help me put pants on. Later on in the emergency room, the second one I went to, uh, I went to the restroom and there was blood all over the underwear. It wasn't like when a girl starts her period and everything and she gets blood on it, whether she's a heavy flow or not. Like, it was all around it because I was bleeding so much and there was blood everywhere that there was just not really a way to stop it um, from happening. But I didn't know that it was like that. And when they finally put me in a room, I was like, oh, good. Can I change my underwear? And the guy was like, yeah, sure. Uh, are you stable enough to walk to your bed? I said, yes, sir. He said, okay, I'm going to leave. If you need help, the call buttons are here and everything. So I got to change my underwear, thankfully, because my parents bought me clothes. Um, but back to at my house, mom finally gets me a shirt. We put it on and there my mom and grandmother are helping me put it on. And then my mom's like, okay, let's do your pants. I said, I don't need pants. 
come on, we need to go to the hospital. We need to go to the emergency room. I'm going to pass out. Well, she got me to get pants on. And then they're still talking and everything. They get me a towel and tell me to hold the towel over under my nose and everything. Finally, we get into the car and everything. And I'm telling my mom, I'm about to pass out. I feel dizzy. I feel fuzzy. I don't feel good. She's trying to get me to drink soda. The more soda stuff I'm drinking, because my blood sugar was dropping, the more blood I'm getting down my throat. And I didn't want to drink it, but if I didn't, I probably would have passed out in the car. Um, and she was trying to force me. She was like, come on, drink, drink. I'm like, mama, you got to give me a minute. And she, I was holding the drink, and then she was holding the drink. And I'm like, stop holding the drink. Because I was like, I've got to do this. I cannot do it if you're holding the drink. The more she held the drink, the more, like, blood would get down my throat. Um, so then, finally, I'm like, I'm, I'm passing out, Mom. I'm passing out. So she's rubbing my back. She's like, keep drinking. Keep drinking. It's going to get your blood sugar up. I didn't pass out in, at all, which was really good. Um, but then my dad at the emergency room, blah, blah, blah. And my mom's gonna help me get out and everything. And I'm like, mama, I'm gonna die. I don't wanna die. Which, side note, is a good thing. Because I have been suicidal for a very, very long time. So her hearing that I didn't wanna die was a good thing. Um, but then, uh, stop goodness this dog's annoying i don't have a dog at my house and yeah uh my nose itches so then they get me in a wheelchair and they start wheeling me in and they're asking me questions then i'm freaking out i can't really answer their question i'm like i can't see i can't see what's coming on i can't see I, I can't see. Huh, I'm passing out. Freaking out. I, I, I don't really remember them getting me into the bed. But I asked about it later on. Like, did they have to lift me up? And they said no. Uh, because I couldn't really see. Because literally, it was like my eyes were closed. Like, I knew they were open, but like... It looked black, like when your eyes are closed. And so that was scary. Then they put IVs in me and stuff. They put one in this hand, which still has a little bit of a bruise. And then one in my arm with a bruise. And then the other hospital tried to do my hand. <coughs> but couldn't get anywhere. So they got blood out of there. Um... But they got IV fluids in me, and then they were, like, talking to me the whole time. And then I finally calmed down enough and talked and gave information I needed to give and everything. And they pretty much had given me this bag. It was, like, a plastic bag with a circle holding it open. I, I don't know if there's a medical term for it or what. Um, that I literally just held over my nose, held it, uh, later on, then they put packing in my nose, but they didn't put it deep enough, so it was pouring out this side, and I don't remember what they did to get it to stop going out this side, then it was also going down my throat, then they redid the packing, and my bleeding stopped and everything, and I signed papers being like, oh, yeah, I can go in an ambulance to another hospital. Um, so then they took me to another hospital, well, another ER part of the hospital. Um, the ambulance people came, and they were like, can you stand up and get in the wheelchair? Not wheelchair, get on the stretcher thingy. I said, I, I can try. Um, and I kind of did, kind of didn't. Like, they helped me, but they didn't have to, like, lift me up. Um, 
And then the lady was like, are you going to throw up? I said, I think so. So she got me a different one of the bag things, which was really good for me. I was really happy about that. Um, <clears throat> and then they put me in the ambulance. And it was either when they put me in it or when we first started moving. I threw up in the bag. It was really bloody. Like, most of it was blood. There was a little bit of brown chunks, but it, it was very bloody. And so then the lady calls someone and then is talking about my bloody throw up and everything and then tells him that I can't remember she said a number cc's um and then another number and then something else and then I after she got off the call I was like what's going on she said, you know that bag that was attached to you? I said, the one in the IV thing? She goes, yes. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, the bloody throw up, you threw up about a third of that bag of blood. I was like, oh, I did? And I said, oh, I don't, I don't feel good. I, 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 fuzzy. And she was like, baby, you cannot pass out. I do not have the, what was it? Was it credentials or something? I don't know the word she used, but she was like, I do not have the blank to hook you up to any fluids. So I don't know if the other lady driving the ambulance could hook me up to fluids or not, but I didn't pass out. I got to the other emergency room. They asked me if I needed to roll onto the bed or not, I said, I can get on there. I got on there, everything. Stuff went by. Then, fine, like, they hooked me up to an EKG and all the other stuff. Then a lady came to take blood, so she used the IV that was in here because the other place had to take blood. Um, and I start shaking and freaking out. I'm like, I'm going to pass out. No, no, stop. I'm going to pass out. No, no, uh, uh. And I'm like, I'm sorry, you're doing your job, but I'm going to pass out. I don't want you to do this. I'm going to pass out. I didn't pass out. <laughs> Yay. Uh, but I, it, I was shaking, hyperventilating, and freaking out. I, I don't know if I was crying or not, but I know I was, like, freaking out and, like, <laughs> I'm going to pass out type stuff. My hair is so greasy. Ew. Um, and everything. Then... It goes to later on, blah, 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 a lot of stuff happened. Then the, not the doctor that did my surgery, but a different nose doctor surgery person came and shoved this huge thing up my nose that went to right here, I believe. It was like, how big was it? It was big. Uh, it was hanging out to like here from my nose and it came to like here. So it was like, it was big, big for putting up your nose. It was longer than a tampon, I believe, but I, I could be wrong. Um, if I decide to edit this and not just throw the video up there, I'll like show you a picture of my bloody one. Cause you can see most of it in the picture the when it got taken out the guy told me that it was gonna hurt and i was like it's okay it's your job i just want my nose to be fine he shoved it in my nose oh it felt like somebody was like scraping the inside of my nose which was probably what it was doing it hurt this eye teared up like i didn't cry but like it teared up and like a few tears dropped but it wasn't like me crying over it um but it hurt really really bad that guy goes off talks to people blah 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 comes back and it's like well i don't know if we're gonna make you stay or not 
but if you just came to my office like this, I'd send you home. Well, then they're like, haha, you're going to spend the night. So then spend the night, didn't really get any sleep. The bed at the hospital I was at um, moves to help with the bed sores so they don't happen. Um, so I could barely sleep. People kept coming in it out to check my blood pressure and stuff. Then that morning, a lady came to take my blood. I said, I'm just going to warn you that I don't know if it's because I lost a lot of blood, blood yesterday or because of the panic I was in being in the ER, but I might start hyperventilating and freaking out over you taking my blood. I'm not scared of people taking my blood, but it could be because my blood is low. I'm not sure. She's the one that tried to do it in the hand and she was wiggling the needle. I don't know if you're supposed to do that. I've never heard of someone doing that, but she was like, I can't find a vein. And then she's like, I think I found one. And then she did it here and she poked me a few times and was like, I don't know if I can do da 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 because she couldn't use this one because I had like liquid attack. But I don't know why she couldn't use the one here. Like, I, I don't know. Um, she took my blood. I didn't freak out or anything. It was fine. People checked my stuff. Doctor finally came in, the one that did my surgery. He talked to me. He looked at stuff and he was like, Okay, I'm going to look at your blood results. Then he came back later, and then he was like, I think you can go home. And I was like, okay. So then I went home, and so that that was, that was my story. It was fun. Oh, I left out something. One of the nurses, they asked me this at every point, like both ERs and when I went up to the area to spend the night. But the one that I went up to the area to spend the night nurse, I thought was so funny. She goes, I'm going to ask you some weird questions. I have to ask them. She was like, are you thinking about harming yourself? I said, no, ma'am. haven't thought about that in about a month. And she looked at me weird. And she goes, okay. Are you thinking about killing yourself? I said, no, ma'am. Haven't thought about that in about a month, too. And she asked me a few other things that went along that line. And I looked at her and I said, I just thought I should be honest with you. Right now, I've been freaking out because I'm scared I'm going to die, which is kind of a good thing. But I've been suicidal in the past, and that's why I take my depression and anxiety meds to help with that. And she goes, oh, okay. Well, will you tell us if you start feeling that way? I said, yes, ma'am, I'll tell you. And she said, okay, we just want to keep you safe. And I was like, yeah, I know. And also, you kind of have to ask those questions. I get it. Okay, well, I'm going to call that my story. Because it's been like 23 minutes. And I really got to put the cotton back up my nose. Because it's supposed to do lubrication or something. I, I don't really know. But I got to put it back up my nose. So... Bye. Thanks for listening to my story. If I edit this video, then I'll add in the stuff like at the end here. If I don't, oh well, you'll deal with it. Okay.